Yeah, recording. Thank you. Okay, so let us just uh, quickly look again at um, the voting algorithm. And, uh, um, you know, Mathematica is a free software for um, UNSW students, so uh, use the opportunity uh, to familiarize yourself with it because it's an amazingly powerful uh, software package. It has its own uh, glitches, but uh, uh, not very many of them. Uh, it's uh, extraordinarily easy to use uh, to design algorithms. It tends to be slow on uh, large data sets, but uh, um, and there are ways of speeding it up. Uh, you should keep in mind that Mathematica tends to, uh, to do a symbolic processing for as long as possible. And that, of course, is uh, much slower than simple numerical uh, processing. So to force Mathematica uh, to simplify things down to numbers where uh, possible, you use, uh, let me see where it is. Uh, here you use this um, command n of something which uh, tells Mathematica that uh, it should evaluate uh, the functions uh, uh, rather than keep them in a symbolic form. Um, because otherwise things can become, uh, formulas can become very complicated and the processing can be uh, really slow. And uh, so try to, uh, to download it and to run this code and try to defeat the voting algorithms. Try to see uh, how clever the colluding guys uh, uh, have to be in order to sway the election um, in, uh, uh, in the way how they want to do it. So uh, let me just quickly remind you, so we generate um, voting lists. So each list is given uh, by this uh, variable, say one up to uh, A7, and uh, the numbers are uh, the uh, candidates for whom the voter uh, that corresponds to the column has voted. So for example, here, the first candidate voted on list one for the first candidate, sorry, the, the first voter voted on the list one for the first candidate, uh, then uh, for candidate number six on the second list, uh, uh, candidate number five on the third list, and so forth. So here we have only five voters, right? And now to ensure uh, some, and uh, the, uh, the votes, uh, well, kind of I assign them randomly, except for the seventh list uh, uh, that uh, gives you kind of the the consensus what voters think, they think that on the seventh list, uh, candidate number one is the best. Now, to ensure a reasonable level of agreement between voters, I simply uh, replicate uh, uh, this, uh, um, how many times I think was it? Uh, three. I think three times, yes, is equal to three. So this uh, tells you how many blocks of the votes uh, we concatenate. Uh, so we concatenate three blocks, uh, right? Um, and this will represent, quote unquote, honest uh, voters that uh, did not collude. So you can see here uh, voters between one and uh, 15 all vote for the first person on the seventh list, right? And so the first 15 voters are, uh, are honest, legitimate voters. 
and then you get three times as many voters uh, that collude and they want to change the outcome of election uh, instead of in, uh, electing candidate number one, they want uh, uh, to uh, they want candidate number five uh, to win, right? Um, but they are not terribly interested in outcomes of, of voting on other lists, so they vote randomly on all uh, other lists, right? Uh, so. Uh, we aggregate uh, the, so let's uh, run it. We will aggregate the, uh, all the votes in a single table. Right here it is. Um, so uh, you can see that. Uh, uh, colluding voters vote uh, uh, randomly for uh, all other lists uh, except the one because uh, uh, here is how uh, the vote, how the preferences are determined. Uh, so uh, the colluding voters vote uh, randomly um, except for the very last. Uh, uh, least, where do I say this? Here it is. Uh, so, oh no, this is. Uh, uh, ah, yes, here it is. Uh, so, on the very last list, the, the colluding voters uh, vote for candidate number five, while the regular voters, honest voters, vote for candidate number one. So, this is the matrix of voters that uh, you get. So, as we saw last time, um, the procedure, how does the procedure uh, work? Well, we define um, the trustworthiness of, of each voter to be the measure how compliant he is uh, with the votes of the majority. Right? How do we accomplish this? So you have on the Voting schema, right? Let me just just to remind you. So, um, so you remember, you have voting lists with candidates, uh, right? One, two, three, whatever many you have and then you have and you have several of these lists right and you have uh, several voters right so these are voters and these are candidates uh, right and uh, uh, this is kind of a process that goes in both directions right um, the trustworthiness of each voter. So the, each voter will be assigned dynamically its trustworthiness. Uh, 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 or a voter or rater TR, right? If this is rater R, he will get assigned its trustworthiness. And each item here, so if this is a list L and this is item I, he, he will get a row, uh, I think I wrote it as a subject. Li will be the rank or the rating of this item. So how is trustworthiness of a voter computed? It's sum total of the ranks of all items for which he has voted for. Right? So if I voted for the item here and Jade item here, uh, trust, uh, we will, he will get trustworthiness raw of L i uh, plus raw of L prime J. Right? On the other 
So this is in this direction, uh, but then in forward direction, each vote of a, a voter is counted not one, but whatever its trustworthiness is. And then we keep iterating this back and forth algorithm until the ranks or trustworthiness, uh, that's essentially the same, uh, stabilize. So that between the two iterations, the difference uh, in either ranks or trustworthiness is smaller than some prescribe the value epsilon. So here you can see, um, uh, remember in this list, uh, the horizontal corresponds to the list, and vertical corresponds uh, to, the, uh, to the voter, and uh, the number here corresponds to uh, his chosen candidate. So you can see here that the trustworthiness uh, Okay, so what is P? V is uh, the index of the voter. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, P is the, uh, the round of iteration, right? So we, uh, we keep iterating until the ranks stabilize. How do we start? We give benefit of the doubt for each voter. So each voter gets initial trust equal to 1. So when he votes with initial trust equal to 1, of course then the ranks, the, the scores of each item which are uh, uh, these uh, arms will be just the number of votes that he got, right? Because this D to D V, uh, the P to power alpha is 1, and in this sum, uh, if, uh, the, if voter V or list I has voted for uh, item J, then, uh, um, uh, then this uh, trustworthiness of that uh, voter uh, will, be, um, will be added to the tally for uh, the jade, uh, for the jade rater, right? So, sorry, for, uh, to the tally of the jade item, right? So, if voter V has voted for item J, then this R value, unnormalized value of ranks of the uh, items uh, will uh, be increased for this value here. Initially, this is just one, right? So this will be simply sum. This will be just uh, the number of uh, voters, right, uh, that voted for item uh, J, right, on the list L. So, um, right, so on the list L, if the voter has voted for item J, then RJ will be incremented by this value. Now, for the purpose that the algorithm converges, we have to normalize uh, this. I don't know why. Okay. Um, so, uh, the ranks are not just this uh, sum total of trustworthiness uh, of the voters that voted for that item, but we divide with the sum of the squares so that the row squared, the sum of the row squared on each list is equal to one. So this is just a technical um, trick to prevent uh, uh, things from exploding, kind of, right? Because as trustworthiness increases, the ranks will increase, which will in turn increase the trustworthiness and the thing can easily diverge. But if you keep this normalization, then things behave uh, very well, right? So once we compute the new ranks 
in the round P of all items, we uh, recompute the trustworthiness of each Walter. And how do we compute the trustworthiness? Well, it's simply some of the ranks such that uh, on, on, uh, on all lists, right? So L is now the variable of summation across all lists. We sum up the ranks of items so that uh, the voter V has voted for, right? So if you fix uh, V, you will get one column um, uh, here, and uh, um, the ranks of all these candidates will be totaled, and you get the trustworthiness of the um, of the voter. Uh, now notice that uh, we did not here define the ranks just the sum of trustworthiness of the voters who voted for that item, but we take it to power alpha. Why do we do that? Well, this is kind of design parameter. Uh, increasing alpha uh, increases the robustness of the schema against collusion, but also increasingly marginalizes uh, uh, voters that are not completely compliant with the sentiment. So uh, for practical applications, you have to choose appropriately alpha. And uh, in the experiments that my student ran, uh, alpha between two and three uh, was a very good choice. Uh, so let's say we set it equal to two. And in fact, we can run it with two, and then we run it with three so that you can see uh, change. Okay, so we tell Mathematica now what the algorithm is, and notice uh, uh, it, you, you just, in Mathematica, you just write formulas. Uh, it's an interpreted language, right? Uh, and uh, it's extraordinarily easy to design algorithms, uh, and the amount of mathematic, uh, mathematics that uh, Mathematica knows is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Okay, so this is the table of initial trustworthiness. Everyone gets the same trustworthiness of one. Now, uh, the, what will be the first round, zero round, of these R values? Well, remember, R values are just sums of trustworthiness of voters to power alpha. If this is equal to one, so this will be sum of ones whenever uh, voter V voted for item J, so uh, the first uh, round of R will just give you the number of votes. And you can see here, because there are only 15 honest voters, uh, candidate number one on the uh, list, uh, uh, on the, the last seventh list, got 15 votes. And uh, the candidate that is being promoted by the colluding voters got 45 votes. So, okay, now in the next round, we simply normalize uh, a row, right? Mathematica knows uh, that the rows are computed using this formula. So you don't have to, you, you simply ask her what uh, 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 rows are. And lo and behold, uh, the first candidate has rank 0 0.31, and the uh, fifth candidate has rank 0 0.94. This would be what you would get um, if you just counted the votes, right? Uh, so obviously, malicious voters would be able to skew the election, and instead of the candidate one, candidate five uh, would be elected. But what we do now, since we have new ranks of objects, right, uh, we can now compute the new trustworthiness of, uh, uh, of um, each voter. How do we compute trustworthiness of each voter? Well, this is simply this formula, it's sum of rows of all items that this voter has voted for. And uh, you can see here, um, uh, so the, 
that honest waters already have, are getting slightly higher rank trustworthiness than the colluding waters. And now we keep iterating. So uh, if we run it once again to compute the new ranks, you see uh, this, the number one, the, the choice of the honest water has his uh, rank increased to 0 0.39 from uh, 0 0.31. <coughs> and uh, this, uh, the colluding water's choice has slightly dropped. Now you uh, iterate again, you compute the new trustworthiness of the waters, then you use them to compute new trustworthiness, uh, sorry, the new uh, ranks of the elements. And you can see now already this is almost one half and this is down to 0 0.87. Uh, and this will give you the trusts uh, of all uh, voters. Uh, so now, uh, of course, you don't do it by hand. Uh, you start with the zero round, so you set V equal to zero, and uh, you see how uh, compact uh, uh, the program, fault and fault, for computing runs. You simply say, while maximal difference between the next round, P plus one, and the previous round, P, when maximal difference in rank of items, uh, if it's uh, larger than 10 to the minus, what is it, I cannot see without, uh, uh, 10 to the minus 4, you uh, increase P and you recompute uh, the ranks. Uh, so if we do that, um, we can see in how many rounds so you see, in 19 rounds of iteration, uh, these two uh, rounds differ. The ranks computed uh, in the 18th and 19th round of iteration differ for less than 10 to the minus 4. And let's see now what the outcomes, what the final uh, ranks are. You can see now number 1 gets almost 1 and uh, number five gets only 0 0.25, so number one will be elected. Uh, so what's the reason for that? The reason for that is uh, because we copied three times uh, this block of votes, uh, we ensure that there is, uh, between the honest water, reasonably high level of uh, agreement, right? Uh, right that, uh, votes are not random, right? On the other hand, the colluding waters cast their votes randomly. So there is a much smaller chance that uh, lots of voters uh, will uh, vote for the same randomly chosen item as particular uh, voter. So when you compute their trustworthiness, it will be small. And then as you keep iterating, it will keep dropping because their opinion will be taken into account in smaller and smaller weight. Um, and uh, lo and behold, this is the, the there is nothing uh, much uh, to eat. You can see the trustworthiness table now. You see honest work, waters have, uh, this is 5.85 or 4. Uh, and uh, the polluting waters uh, have much smaller uh, ranks. And as I told you, we ran it on uh, a review, uh, referee reports of a major AI conference in Australia. Uh, what happens there? Each referee referees a bunch of uh, papers, and every paper is refereed by a bunch of referees. Uh, right? So now you have to aggregate the, uh, these, uh, uh, the scores that uh, uh, each paper got to decide which papers you accept. Right? And as it happens, uh, some academics think that they are the only smart ones in the universe, so they tend to trash everyone. 
Uh, some people might just vote randomly because they don't bother even to read the, the uh, submissions assigned to them to referee. But this algorithm weeds them out. And shockingly, 30% of referees got extremely low scores. Uh, uh, and uh, the highest scores went, in fact, to uh, uh, the highest scoring referee was uh, a former PhD student at UNSW, Nina Narodinska, that just uh, gave a talk a couple of days ago on Nina Mats, uh, who took her, her refereeing job uh, seriously. Okay, so the algorithm is very simple. So how would you, if you are colluding guys, uh, how would you, and you knew how the algorithm works. How would you still manage to subvert? Yes? Uh, instead of randomly allocating all the rest of the votes, have them all colluded as well, but just less than the... So you'd have... Uh, yeah, so you, you would choose a few other um, candidates so that you would boost up your own trustworthiness, um, but overall voting highest for the... That's right. So you would then um, choose, you will collude not only on the very last uh, voting list that you care about, but you would collude with a reasonably large number of other voting lists to gain trustworthiness. Because if uh, um, all the colluders vote on other lists as well in uh, agreement, uh, uh, they will look that actually they represent the community sentiment and the algorithm, of course, will give them a high weight. So, you know, there is no, <coughs> there is no silver bullet when it comes to malicious activities, but uh, first of all, the, uh, you know, the uh, scoring system doesn't have to disclose how the votes are aggregated to make life of uh, those who want to manipulate it harder. Uh, and, in fact, and it raises the bar of what kind of activity uh, attackers uh, have to engage in in order to uh, succeed. Uh, so you can think of, of applications of this. Uh, uh, for example, uh, if you want to find out what is the real sentiment, stock, sentiment of stock market analysts, right? Then uh, uh, the, their votes uh, are essentially for each stock you have a voting list, and the alternatives uh, are uh, strong sell, sell, hold, uh, buy, and strong buy. Uh, so only five options, uh, and uh, you can aggregate the votes in this way uh, to see what the, really the community sentiment is, right? Now, it doesn't mean that you should follow the advice of the majority, right? Because humans have this, uh, how is it called, hurting, I think something like that, that uh, uh, they tend to kind of reinforce prejudice of the group. So if you get um, the, if you run your algorithm and you get the trustworthiness of voters uh, and you will have a history how successful in the past their predictions were, which analyst would you choose? Uh, how would you choose the analyst to follow and invest your money? What is the most, the best choice? Uh, Yes? Uh, the analyst who has a high trust for the transport. Can you be a bit louder? We cannot hear you, and the camera cannot hear you. The analyst who has a uh, high trust for the transport gets the majority. Exactly. So you would really look for people that actually got low trustworthiness, which means low agreement with the crowd, right? Uh, but. Uh, their past record is good, right? Because it means that they are better than the crowd in judging. So uh, when you have an algorithm, it generates a signal, but how you use it is another story. Yes? Is it possible to reconcile this algorithm with the actual outcome? Like, for instance, the stock market, this is just 
just have Yes, to yes, so that's exactly, um, oh, you mean, uh, uh, yes, you can do that as well. So the suggestion is, uh, can you uh, change slightly this algorithm to take into account past performance of uh, the voters? And the answer is yes. What you can do is uh, you can, your trustworthiness can be multiplied by a weight. And this weight is the correlation of his uh, uh, predictions with the outcome of the um, of the stock market. Uh, the same idea applies for refereeing papers. Uh, when you referee a paper, you give it a score, but uh, in lots of journals or conferences, you have to declare what. What else is significant piece of information to the committee besides how you judge the manuscript? You declare how close to your area of competence the topic is, right? Because you might not be very familiar with the, uh, with the topic. So you see, you can refine further this algorithm by introducing carefully weights that reflect, for example, that reflect how competent you are to judge a particular uh, paper. Um, or, for example, in this uh, question and answer websites, right? Uh, after people vote what's the best uh, answer, you can, um, there is, you can also declare uh, for each you can compute, uh, I think there is something, how helpful the answer was. So the bottom line is this. Uh, the algorithm can be <coughs> altered in many ways, but you have to be careful with one respect. But how you tweak it, it should preserve the convergence proof because then you are guaranteed that as you iterate, things will eventually stabilize. So for that reason, it's actually extremely useful to understand proof of the convergence of the algorithm, uh, because uh, you can see from the proof how you can massage it to adopt it to whatever you need, uh, but without breaking its soundness. It's, uh, to ensure that the algorithm converges. Uh, so you might want to think of uh, different applications. For example, you might want to aggregate real analyst data. And I just uh, renewed a class account at this Wharton School of Business in America. Uh, that they have a huge database of all sorts of market data. Uh, and if you want to play with such data, uh, you can come to my office after the class and I can tell you the login and uh, the password for the, the pass. The, the, uh, and you have, uh, but please don't give it to anyone because the subscription, if you were, say, a hedge fund and wanted that data, the, the price to get the data is astronomical. So they are very uh, concerned, they are very careful that the, the access uh, is not abused, that it's really used only for educational purposes. But the amount of data is just uh, staggering. And you can decide uh, what you want to aggregate, uh, right, and how to use. And uh, the student of mine that worked out uh, the details of this algorithm, uh, how many, maybe four or five years ago, uh, had absolutely no exposure on mathematic, of mathematics. He was just a good software engineer, but he picked up the flavor of this and even the convergence proof uh, and was able to do all sorts of interesting things, for example, uh, to use it to, for uh, ranking movies on 
how is it called this website? I, I okay, yep, that's the one. And also Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and uh, uh, it was interesting that the results he got is different than the uh, IMDb right, uh, rating, but closer to Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it wasn't just off. Uh, it was kind of somewhere between the Rotten Tomatoes and uh, the ranking of that website. Uh, and he also applied it for customer feedback. Uh, I think he had a small data set from uh, I don't remember, eBay, I think. So anyhow, this is, uh, uh, so what is the benefit of this, you see? <clears throat> there is incredible proliferation of data out there. And in order to use it, uh, you have to somehow summarize it. Uh, right? So this method simply gives you optimal kind of detection of community sentiment. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's some form of objective truth or anything. Uh, it just gives you um, uh, community community sentiment. Um, sorry, let me just. Uh, um, so, so this kind of and it's not a rocket science, right? After uh, if you play a little bit with this, uh, uh, I'm sure you will see uh, many applications, and maybe you can. Uh, in, in whatever way you need it uh, to, uh, to do what uh, interests you. So I want to invite you to whatever we are doing here, uh, just experiment with it, uh, right? Because that's the only way to kind of learn algorithms uh, properly. So, uh, so uh, next thing that we will, any questions about the algorithm or? Uh, yes. Actually, when you talked about applying a light to the stop target number, so that you can see what the target is doing, and then you can actually see the stop target number and the weight is going to be larger, right? Yes. Yeah, well, that's one way of applying the weight. So how would you describe what this algorithm does? If you apply also weight from his past performance and you give him, you multiply his trustworthiness with the estimate of his past performance.